catfishes. Um, I kind of gave her the format, but if any of you didn't hear, I'll brief you now. If you look in the text chat, I got that running list going. Uh, so that's going to be the order we ask questions. And when someone else is asking a question and have an interaction, please mute yourself. And if you want to ask yourself, just let me know. I will add you to the list. And then once the list is done, we'll kind of open up the chat to everybody. Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany is muted. John, did you uh, mute certain roles or? No, I didn't. Let me. Let it me seems mute. like everybody muted. I don't know why Fishing was unmuted. Let me just give everybody permissions back. Sorry about this, guys. Tiffany says she can't unmute. All right, oh, boy. There we go. There we go. Sorry. I was so you... that I <laughs> dumbed out on. No worries. We're, it was saying we're... push to talk, and I was like, I am. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we, we, we hear your charming voice now. And um, if you don't mind, um, just, just give us a quick uh, introduction, and I will ask my question. A quick introduction to myself. Yeah, uh, maybe wow. maybe my question will help you with that. What I really okay. wanted to know is how you how did you get involved with lornography? And a second part to that question is: Does anybody in your like personal life know you do this? Okay, so how I got into lornography was just by watching T Cab, and I wandered over to YouTube after it wasn't available on their the NBC website anymore. And I was able to find some episodes there. But then, of course, there was a ton of other stuff, too. Based Shaman's channel came up, and I'm like, what is this? And I didn't know Lorne. I, I remember him from the show, but just by name, I had no idea who he was. And then as I started to see more and more about him, I was like, this is just so crazy. So he became the one that I really got to know the most. So I think I came in probably at the end of Ramona. I was there at the live call when they broke up. So that was fun. And um, so I used to just kind of hang out. So every once in a while, I would I would go into Wine Lover's streams because she would be streaming when I'd be getting up for work. Um, and that's just kind of how I was was really introduced to a lot of the Lorne calls and everything that was going on with him, it was just absolutely fascinating. So as far as people in my real life knowing, absolutely not. There isn't a single person who knows. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to say. I would have no idea what to say. So I just said. But your lonography is like a secret addiction. This up over there. <laughs> And then when you want to hook your laptop into it or you yeah, want to whatever it, it down. <laughs> so this is like a secret addiction for you? Oh, yeah, here it is. See, I'm on the um, um, sort of. So, I mean, it just, the it's just, it's like, okay. Um, I'm sorry. In between, You'll probably be in the video chat. Yourself, video. Oh, I'm sorry. I will server mute them until, okay, they got it. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they got it. Um, So I guess it's. I don't know ad addiction, but I mean it's it's definitely very very interesting, and it's such a it's such a dark hole to fall into, you know. And there's just more and more, and everywhere you go, there's channels and people are making different things, like Arrested's channel. Um, I'm not really into prank calls, which is kind of funny, <laughs> but. But as prank calls in themselves, um, but I know that there are some really great ones and some iconic ones out there. So people were just making so much different content that I, I just, you can't ever run out of it, I don't think. There's new channels popping up all the time. So yeah, hopefully that I'm answers same, I'm shocked. It, it did, yeah. And um, as far as the community, you're, you're completely anonymous in the community, right? Nobody in the community knows your real identity. Um, no, I, I think there's, there's only a couple of people that know a little bit more. Um, but no, I, ha I've never revealed myself. And I think that's for a good reason. Um, I, I think that there could be, 
you know, I, I feel like if I were to have my photo out there or, or something like that, it would be sent to Lauren pretty, pretty quickly wow, um, by somebody. Yeah. And it would just be, it would be shared a lot and everything. So I just, um, I think it's, it's better for my own personal security almost just to, just to keep it hidden. Do not blame you there. Yeah. Okay. I took up enough of your time. I will move down the list to um, my partner in this, John, straight partner. All right. <laughs> Tiffany, how are you? I'm so Hello. Glad to have you here? Um, thank you. On behalf of everybody here, uh, thank you so much. Um, so, brother, Mike kind of took what I was going to initially ask, but I was kind of sparked by this conversation um, to think of another question, and I'm kind of wondering, what's your opinions and thoughts? Like, where do you think? the future of Lornography is going to go? Because do you think personally he can keep falling for all of these like trials and tribulations that he does on like a, you know, on a, on a so often basis that like that most people are too smart to see through it? Do you like, do you think he'll ever catch on is the question? Or do you think like he'll forever be stuck in this like fantasy, uh, fantasy world have you that he lives in? I think that he is always up for grabs as far as catfishing is concerned. I think that it's always going to happen. He's so desperate for attention. As far as him figuring things out, I think he has. I don't think that there's really a lot that he's he hasn't seen through in a way. And I know that sounds kind of funny because you wouldn't imagine that somebody is actually going to sit there through all of the bullshit. I mean, there's so much. Um, but I think to a certain degree, he does know. He knows he's being fucked with. That's why there are certain things that he won't say. Um, as far as getting super weird when it comes to sexual stuff, he won't say it over the phone. As far as talking about his, you know, maybe some of the darker things about him that are related to his guilt. He doesn't want to talk about those either. And he always says, when you're here, when you're here, we'll talk about those. And he doesn't want to say it over the phone. He knows that there's a, a very good reason to believe that he is being recorded. And so I think that th that goes to show that he, he has awareness of, of what's happening. And also, you know, he, he will call us out. We've been called out many times um, during the TSA call after that was over, even. He knew it was fake. I actually thought that was going to be the end of it. <laughs> there were many times when something super crazy like that would happen. I really thought that was going to be the end. But he gets turned around because he's so lonely. And so I think he just he just wants somebody to stay on the phone. And for Lauren... He has, he has such a, a desperate need for somebody to hang out with him. And if you ever hear him talk to Ramona, I think that's one of the most telling calls. The post breakup is when he's talking to Ramona and he talks about how much time they spent together. And even though she would not give him her name, her birthday, Really, anything about her, she told him that everything that she said was fake. That he still was talking about how they spent time together and that meant something. So then by the end of that call, even though it started out to be pretty accusatory, he's talking about sending nude photos, um, asking her if she wants to see his PP, whatever he says. So it's very, very bizarre um, but I think that he knows he's just, he's so desperate. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. He's, this is like his only, like, not even, even though it's not real, it's just like his social life. It's a social interaction, like post TCAP. Mm -hmm. like his, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah. We can move on to the next question. Um, looks like, uh, Gay Mangoes is next on the list. All right. Hi, Queen. Hello. <laughs> so I don't actually have any questions. I just have a couple comments and okay. that I am such a fan and I appreciate you so much. You are a queen of the community. 
And I just, well, I won't go down that. I won't go down that road. But lornography is kind of personal to me because unfortunately I was in a Molly situation. I was in a Kayla situation. And so hearing you talk to him has kind of been a weird sense of justice for me. Mm -hmm. You say everything that I wasn't able to say. And so I just, I appreciate you so much for that. And that's what I have to say. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm so sorry that that happened. I think that story is personal to a lot of people, um, especially growing up during that time, being young when the internet was sort of in, in chatting and was getting off the ground and was really popular. And it gave people access that I'd, parents didn't realize that people had. Certainly kids don't realize that people have access to them in certain ways. And you have somebody like Lorne who's going to take advantage of that. And unfortunately, you have people like yourself, Kayla, Molly, and so many others who fall into that trap. And it's really sad. So I hope that you're okay today. That is the most important. Nothing that you could have done or said during that time is not your fault. It was 100% that person. Yeah, without even knowing the story, it doesn't even matter. It's the point that you have somebody who's older that's going to take advantage. And I hope that, you know, you can put that behind you. And I'm glad Mm -hmm. that you're able to find some kind of like fuck yeah moments, you know, as you're listening to Lauren cry, scream, Absolutely. get screamed at. Yeah. It's, it's a good time. So Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I am growing past that, but there is sweet, sweet justice in your words. And I just, yeah. I appreciate you for that. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. You no, know, thank you. And I will pass <laughs> the gauntlet over to good and you lifestyle guru. Good and you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Game Mango. Sending you a hug. Hi, Tiffany. Hi. Nice with you. Yeah, um, absolutely. Just to kind of go off of what Game Mango said, I was in a very abusive relationship with my ex, and I have found Lauren's behavior is very similar to them. And same, like every time you yell at Lauren, I'm just like, oh yes, that's me talking to them. It's very nice. <laughs> Um, but my question is, I, I sort of changed it now listening to you. Is there any, has there been any skills that you picked up while talking to Lauren that you use now in interacting with people? Or maybe something that you hadn't done before you started talking and catfishing Lauren to now? Um, that is a really good question, actually. Um, and I'm glad that you're out of your relationship as well. So that's, that's great to hear. Um, let's see. So I think a lot of what you hear during the calls when, when there's a questioning happening, um, that's just my, that's my real personality. I like to ask a lot of questions like that. And I just want to get to the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. And Lauren is certainly a challenge <laughs> because <laughs> he's such a big liar and he's, he doesn't like to, to acknowledge the truth at all. Mm-hmm. And so that is, that is definitely difficult. I think that I have changed a lot, you know, from the time that I started talking to him until it was over. So it's probably over the course of a year or so. Mm-hmm. I think that I did change a lot. Um, at the beginning I was much like many people. I was very, very angry. And so I absolutely said things to him that I would never say to anybody else. But because it was Lauren. Who's that? (laughs) Hey, that's a nightfall. Can you mute your. Hello? Let the nightfall? I think. I think we're good. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think that, you know, saying those things to Lauren, I didn't care. I didn't see him as a human being. Yeah. It didn't matter to me if I said, fuck you, go kill yourself. It didn't matter. I didn't care. Right. Um, and I think that at this point, I think I'm a lot more calm, actually, than I was. I think that... I've sort of compartmentalized a lot of things when it comes to that. 
And I realized that I have to worry about myself. I have to work like I'm the only one in my room. And that's what I say to a lot of people too. You're the only one in your room and you have to protect that and you have to make it your peaceful place. You have to make yourself happy. And from there on, it branches out to, you know, with other people and everything, but I can't allow him to have an impact on me. Like I, I would find myself even after calls being really angry Mm. and I didn't really like that. Um, And that's actually when I took a break, when the swordfish happened, (laughs) that was a break, which was great. It ended up being great. Right. Um, What was that? Can you elaborate elaborate on that? What was, what's the swordfish? Oh, Oh, well, what happened was um, Debbie was out on a boat with Angelo because that's what she does. She was out with that cocksucker every night. <laughs> and, she, and she got stabbed in the throat by a swordfish. But miraculously, she survived. Um, and she was in the hospital. And there's a whole drama. I think it's the wrecking ball calls. Um, where Angelo is still around and Lauren is screaming and yelling because he doesn't like him. And he <laughs> brought coffee one day, ruined his mother's day. I mean, it's, it's really fantastic. Um, so, so there's a lot of stuff in there that happened. I'm not too, too familiar with it. Um, just because when I decided that I felt like I wanted to come back and I was interested again, um, I couldn't, there's just so much, you can't go back and listen to it all, right? Mm-hmm. You just got to kind of start where you are. And so, yeah, that's basically what happened. Uh, so during that time, I, I just w- needed some time for myself. And it's really odd how somebody who's not in my life, you know, Lauren is in a different state. He, I don't know anybody he, he's not a part of my family. He's not anybody I work with. He's he's right. nobody. And for him to make me so angry, it's like, I just, I need to stop. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just, I had to really calm down and um, just really kind of, you know, take care of myself because, you know, I couldn't have him impact me in a negative way. But he is such a toxic person. That, you know, you don't think that he's going to have an effect on you because you're like, oh, whatever. He's just over the phone. You know, he's over the phone. He's not here. Like, you know, I can just keep him, you know, totally separate. He's not talking to me. He's talking to a character. And most of the time it's really funny. But, you know, there are times where I would find myself getting really, really angry. And I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that he took the break, but I'm also glad that he came back. Because then I was able to have um, some calls with him that I really wanted to have. Um, Like talking about Molly and all of that. Yeah. Which is incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for everything that you have given the community. And we really appreciate, you know, all of that emotional labor. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for listening. (laughs) All right. Who uh, up is? next we have Stove. So Stove, if you want to take yourself off mute, you have the floor. Hi everybody, but especially to you, Tiffany. Um, hey Stove. I apologize in advance if I'm a bumbling, stumbling fuck here. I'm a bit starstruck. <laughs> You've been Aww. my favorite for such a long time. <laughs> I, I said it in the chat earlier. I'll say it again. Ember may have uh, may have quote unquote invented the catfishing, but you perfected it. You are the goat. Oh, and, well, thank you. And so, um, like going on to that, one thing that I think, uh, just a quick comment I want to make is that um, you definitely have the best personality to um, evoke the most reaction, to get the best reaction out of Lauren out of all the catfish I've seen. Because, mm-hmm. like, uh, uh, like in the case of Ramona, I felt like she was too nice and would let things just kind of derail too much. Uh, Ember, she had so many characters, I couldn't even keep track of them. But with you, you were a real hard ass on him, which was perfect. Not to mention mm-hmm. Larry, like you didn't, <laughs> let him, you didn't let him derail, you didn't let him obfuscate. Like, there's even that sound clip where you say where he's just like mid sentence, you're like, shut up. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. That would be great. Um, anyway, so my my question is this: um, I don't I don't know entirely where you stand on this debate. Um, what what sexual experience, if any, to any extent, do you think Lauren has had? <laughs> That's always a funny question, right? <laughs> That's always a funny one. I will have to say that the probability of Lauren being a virgin is more than what I thought before. Thanks. So I'm never going to know for sure, right? We're never going to know. If somebody could come forward and be like, I did it, I fucked him, <laughs> that would be great. Because <laughs> then it would, just, it would just put it all to bed. But he, th there's so much evidence there, too. That makes you put the question there. It gives you that reasonable doubt to say, well, I'm not so sure now. So previously, I used to think, no, he's probably not. Because number one, given his age, there's a lot of time in between there that something could have happened. And then also the fact that he went to the military and... I really didn't I really didn't give enough credit, I think, to the fact that he was out in Alaska. He wasn't in San Diego or Fort Bragg and Pound Town somewhere. He was in, you know, he was pretty isolated. And so if there's gonna be women, there's gonna be a lot of guys there too who are gonna take him or take the women over Lorne. And the thing with Lauren too is that he's incredibly shy. He is he is shy in person. <clears throat> Over the phone's a different story. He's been catfished for twenty years, you guys. Twenty years. Holy shit! At least. Um, wow. At just least. Like, like I knew that, but like the magnitude of it just hit me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So he feels way more comfortable over the phone. And he wants to have those types of relationships over the phone. So I think that if he were to be sitting in a bar, he's not going to be the guy who's going to go and hit on somebody. He's not going to be the guy to make the first move. Could you imagine Lauren on a date? It would be the most awkward, horrific moment of anybody's life. I mean, it would be such a mistake because you would have to, he would just be laughing at himself. Everything he said, he, you saw him when he was talking to Ember and Dan, he's so uncomfortable. He's not used to that type of an interaction. He doesn't go out to dinner. He doesn't, you know, so, so I think that if he were to go somewhere, it would be a bar, karaoke in, you know, that type of a thing. He would never be able to just sit across from somebody and have a conversation. So, uh-oh. Um, so I think that there is, there's definitely just a lot of possibility um, that he, he is a virgin. I can see it now. And before I didn't, I just figured too, you know, the fact that guy would go karaoke in, he, there has to be some kind of a chick who doesn't have any standards and is just like, you know, um, I guess I'll take you. I mean, I, I need to have sex tonight, so let's go. You would, you would think that that might happen, but I don't think that it did. So as far as in, I know, I know in Reborn Streams, there is a sound clip of Lauren saying, I'm your virgin. He's not really making a confession there. He's saying that because Jamie is saying, you're a virgin, you're a virgin, you're a virgin. And he's just kind of, he's being a little sarcastic with it. So it's not really a confession, but there's a lot more, I think, that's, that's convincing outside of him just saying it. It's the fact that he doesn't know how sex works. He doesn't know, like, what, I mean, the stories that he tells are so weird. Exactly. And, yeah, I remember, I remember sitting there one time and he's telling a sex story. And, like, we're thinking, how does that even work? Like, the physics of it just would never, would never happen. Um, so it's really, it's really, really weird. And then, plus, you know, he has that famous vagina drawing. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. The fact that the multiple clits on, on women, he, he's not really sure. So it's, it is very weird. So I think even if he, I would even venture to say, I don't think he's gotten to second base. I don't think that he, that a woman has like on purpose, let him touch her boobs. <laughs> I don't think it happened. I'm like 95% in agreement with you on that because I personally am of the opinion and I, I'm kind of like as hardline as clobber is about this. When I mm-hmm. say I personally don't think that any woman has interacted with his penis in any capacity. Um, I think that I'm 50 50 on whether he's even made out with a girl, to be honest, because um, like reading his chat log with Kayla, he like out of all the things that he asks her limitless questions about, he really interrogates her on the nature of her kissing Derek, which to me suggests that the only experience he has is kissing a girl. And he's Mm. worried that she has, quote unquote, more experience than him. And that frightens him. Mm hmm. Yeah, it could be. It definitely could be. I mean, he he really doesn't know anything about women. And just like Tickle P Shiver says, the the explanation of of a blowjob is crazy. The things he says, they just don't make any sense. So, yes, I'm team virgin. Devil's advocate slightly here, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people, like, give his... uh, misunderstanding or ignorance about anatomy as Uh evidence of his virginity and while that certainly doesn't help i wouldn't say that that's a surefire sign only because you know tons of 13 year old kids in health ed class know more Mm -hmm. than he does that so it's not exactly it's not exactly like a perfect indicator but it definitely doesn't help his case right no absolutely i i agree with that um and and i think you know, for the small percentage that, you know, there's a possibility that maybe something did happen, it's he's going to be so wasted and he's just not, he's not going to know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, that's, I think that's where he stands. It's funny. It makes it funnier. <laughs> for, for sure. Thank you for answering yeah. my question. It's been a pleasure. Of course. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. I think next we have, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Is that Feeton? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, cool, cool. Hey, uh, what's going on, Tiffany? Yeah, so I just had like a uh, two parter uh, kind of question. So uh, the timeline of this whole catfishing scenario has been, it's a little all over the place and sometimes hard to follow. So I guess I have mm-hmm. like a two parter kind of question. So um, do you still have like any? Connections. I know ever since the doxing incident, Emma seemed to kind of fall off the planet, but I was also curious about Dan. And then I heard mm-hmm. you talk about Lauren now. So I was curious if um, you were still in contact with any of them. And then my second part, just real quick, uh, how the fuck did you convince him to read his own chat log and convince him it'd be good for him? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as far as being in touch with Emma, Dan, or Lauren, no, I'm not in touch with any of them. So um that's that yeah and then as far as the chat log reading i think i just pretty much told him that he was gonna do it (laughs) so did did he ever finish it he didn't finish it because he went to prison oh okay yeah yeah so um that and, and i'll take that right that's that's definitely the best alternative i think that there could have been the fact that he left a voicemail singing on his way to go to probation, having no idea that the marshals were waiting for his ass. That is oh so God. that is so satisfying. It was the best day. I was laughing so hard. I was it was the best. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I, I appreciate it. Of course. I give the floor. Awesome. So, Nup North, you have the floor. Hi. Hi. So, uh, yeah, I just got to start by saying I've probably, I think I've heard every single one of your calls. Um, 
think I've heard all the interviews and everything, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to ask anything that you've already answered. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I have like two or three short ones. Uh, first off, do you uh, do you quote Lauren by accident, like when you're in public or like talking to like just <laughs> personal relationships or whatever by accident? <laughs> I get really close. <laughs> I come really close. I mean, even at work, I do. Yeah. So okay. I, I'm, yeah. So the was weren't, um, actually when I log into work, so I work from home and we have to go on a VPN. So when I do that, it sends a text to my phone and it says, was that you? And I say, this is me. I do it every, <laughs> every day. Um, and that's from the Casey video when he takes his, he sends his very first visit video to Casey and he says, this is me. So I, I definitely say that. Um, the warrants definitely happen. The guy definitely happens. It happens a lot. It yeah. Does. I think it happens to all of us. Um, yeah. And I, I think I have the answer to this one. And you can't say the TSA call because that's the obvious. But um, <laughs> if you were to pick a call uh, that just kind of hit you was like, this is so ridiculous. Like what am I even doing type of like, this is just so crazy. Um, mm -hmm. it all stands out like that besides TSA, what would it be? Um, probably, well, there was one, I think it's called you're get, hang on one quick second. I'm sorry. You're getting an abortion. That's what she's about to say. Damn, I made her leave, guys. Yeah. If you guys could only hear and you can't read the chat because you're on your phone or whatever, let me know and I'll I'll add you to the list of questioners. All right, sorry about that. Wait, so, was it your question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that definitely one, how to listen to it is just like yeah. how how is she like not just laughing through this entire thing? I was. That was the problem. Oh um, yeah, wasn't it? Um, was that the one? Uh, are you laughing or are you crying? Is that was that what it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. It was like the just the perfect storm of things. Um, and so my dog burped, which was just <laughs> funny. It was just like this. She like walks up to me and like just burps, <laughs> and then um, I just started laughing at how ridiculous this shit is. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> And then that, I just started laughing. And then when that happens, you know. It's all over, yeah. It's all uh, over, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I think... Actually, th this is, a, this is like just like a one-word answer, and then I have one more. Um, okay. Do you have a favorite Lornography channel? Or do you, like, not really even, like... Are you not super into this? Outside of talking to them? Um, I don't know who, what my favorite one would be. I do like quite a few of them. That I know of, anyway. I know that there's there's a lot that pop up, you know, every time I log on to YouTube, there'll be like this new channel that'll just yeah. be in my recommended. So I do, I use my Tiffany channel as all lornography, basically. So anytime there's something new, I think it pops up. Um, is, um, is your Tiffany channel back up? It is not. It is oh. not. Um, I just kind of decided I wasn't going to really do stuff. I wasn't yeah. feeling like I was going to anymore. So that's kind of why I just took it away. I don't blame you at all. It can get overwhelming. Um, and I don't even make content. Uh, and then right. the last question, uh, was there anything sort of like, uh, just like, like really shocking that stood out to you um, when you were talking to Lauren, where it was like, you know, past like something you could laugh off, where it was like maybe something we was talking about your future together or something along those lines where it was just like, this isn't even funny. It's just, it's just weird. Oh my God. There were so many things like that. Um, let me think. Anything that sticks okay. out. I know there's, there must be a lot. I think, you know, when he, when he's talking about the, um, deserving a chance, I think as, is just really weird. <laughs> that call was was bizarre um, because first of all, he's he's ranting and raving about deserving a chance, deserving a chance, and then 
at the end of it, he wants to get his number over to Casey. Really? Yeah, I believe that that's the one. Um, I think it was go fuck your fucking cocksuckers. Wait, so you were Debbie in that call? Yeah. And so you had already been Casey, and then he found out that that was fake, and then so you were Debbie, and he was convinced that Casey, like the real Casey, wanted to talk to him. Yeah. I had heard something that I, he's, I mean, I, I always say that I can't get shocked by his stupidity, but I he know. really like got, got fooled by that twice. Yeah. That's, so, that's so what crazy. happened was Casey appeared on Chris Hansen's podcast and that was Ooh. real. Um, and there was a video and everything that they were talking together and Winnie, who is the most reliable witness on the planet, right? <laughs> um, she let him know. I think Emma did too. Two separate people. Let him know that Casey had said that out of all the predators, you know, Lauren was the one that she would like to talk to you again. <laughs> and yeah, so from there, all you have to do is plant the seed. And Lauren's going to take it from there. And he did. He did. Wait, so, so that call was around the same time as the podcast? Yeah. Oh, that was, like, really recent, actually. That was, like, um, less than a year ago. Um, it was It was before he got arrested. Um, so it was in sometime oh, maybe. in... Mm. Yeah, so yeah, he, a... she had been there a couple of times. There was one time, the very first one they did together... Okay. Um, yeah. I'm thinking of the recent one. Yeah, yeah. That's that's crazy yeah. though. I mean, what what an idiot. It is crazy. So what was funny was <laughs> we said that we would put something on Facebook. So he wanted me to send a message to Casey on Facebook. And she he took a picture. And I don't know if you guys remember the picture where he's kneeling in front of his bed. And no. <laughs> he's kneeling in front of his bed and he has this, he's holding a sign that says, um, hi, Casey. Um, uh, Debbie has my number or Debbie, like something like that. Like you can have my number from Debbie. And, <laughs> and so when he wrote that and he took the first picture, I told him that he needed to draw, draw hearts on it. And he did. He, drew, he took out, like, he had colored pencils and stuff, and he drew hearts. It was really funny. Wait, was he naked? He was not naked. Oh, no, wow. He wasn't. He wasn't not that time. I have but, heard yeah. So that's, that's, oh, man, he sucks. I mean, he it's makes great really funny. Yeah, yeah if, I, if I can find the picture, um, I'll post it. Yeah, but please. It is, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, um, P.S. I'm single. <laughs> what a little like, yeah, no so, shit. Right. So then after that, um, I think it was the next day. So I, I just basically was like, okay, fine. Sent the message. And then the next day, Emma tells him that Casey was on Facebook going, oh, my God, what a loser. <laughs> he was so upset. He was so upset. Yeah, I know. I want that. <laughs> it was really, it was really good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's that's all I can really think of. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. well, up north, could I just comment? Did you did you get a shirt with your like lornography persona on it? I don't know what you're talking about, dude. That is amazing. <laughs> dude, this, this was like, oh, you want to see the back? Please. What? <sighs> You see it? Get closer to your camera. Is that Donnie Morrison getting <laughs> kicked in the nuts by? No, yeah, it's it's he's getting a kick in the pants by Chris Hansen. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. That's fucking awesome. That is awesome. Thanks for your <laughs> thanks for your questions. Uh, up next, uh, hit my head again. You have the floor. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Sure can. All right. My mic, my kind of, it's like kind of old, so it might mess up. But uh, I should say at the beginning that I'm not like super into uh, like I haven't seen all the calls and stuff, mm -hmm. but 
I have a friend who's like really into it and just like my proximity to him, like it just kind of like rubs off on me and I find some of the stuff to be really funny, but so I, I can't like ask about specifics, but, um, I kind of just want to get into like your relationship over time with Norm or, uh, Norm. Norm. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Lauren. And, um, so like you, you talked to this guy like for hours, obviously, and like that you used him to some extent. Like, because he was using you, obviously, but, like, you were also using him. Like, you were kind of being this, like, seductress, like, kind of figure. And, like, he's obviously, like, a like very stupid, like, very dark kind of figure. Like, maybe you would even say, like, mysterious in, like, a weird way. But, mm -hmm. like, he's also, like, you know, a musician and a writer. And, you know, some would say, like, you know, maybe, like, kind of handsome even a little bit. And <laughs> Who would say that? Who would say I that? don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Some people. I don't know. Okay. Not me. No, just uh, but uh. So uh, I was just gonna say, like, how did you um, like over time, like, how did you keep from, like, how did you not fall under his spell? Like, how did you not get seduced by him? Like, how did you not like fall in love with him? It's very easy. <laughs> it's very easy not to. He's not somebody to fall in love with. He's a pile of shit. And See, I don't, he, I don't believe that though. I don't, I don't believe you. I think I think you fell you in love don't. with him. You don't. Absolutely not. I did not fall in love with him. No. I, I think I, I think you love uh, Lauren. You do well. You're wrong. I absolutely don't. I promise you that. That would be really silly. Um, no, absolutely not. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> uh, we have John Pedersen's job application. Did you change your name? Because I don't see you. All right. You're getting skipped until we can find you. Operation Lowell, that means you have the floor. Damn it all. God damn it. See, now this is what happens when I'm a terrible streamer. I just fuck everything up. Hi, okay, Tiffany. Okay, okay. Hello. Hi, uh, long time listener, first time caller. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. <laughs> so, um, mine's an easy question. There's a lot of uh, peripheral characters in the Lorniverse, as it were. Um, which one do you think is your favorite? Um, I would say probably Dan. I think Dan would be one of my favorites just because he could get, have Lauren laughing with him and then screaming at him in the matter of a couple of seconds. So, yeah, I would probably say Dan. Fair enough. I guess yeah. that's an easy question. Sure. All right. Um, Operation Lull, you have the floor. Hey, Tiffany. What's up? First of all, I want to say I appreciate your work a lot. Of course. Um, my question is, have you ever in your personal life encountered someone who behaved like Lauren or reminded you of Lauren in some weird way? Or is just or is he just too weird, too different for you to compare to anybody you have ever met in your life? I've never met anybody like Lauren. The amount of delusion that he has and the amount of of effort he puts into deflecting all responsibility um, is pretty remarkable. So, no, I've never met anybody like him. And certainly, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really have anybody like him in my life for real. Um, just because he, it's too much. He's way too much. So I'm lucky. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, up next, we got M. Ducey. Oh, that's me. Uh, sorry, well, um, it's actually after Supper Biscuit. Oh, did I skip you, bro? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. After Supper Biscuit, you got the floor. Okay, bro. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Uh, 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 oh, I, wait, we're not sorry. hearing you if you're talking. Yeah. 
if you um Let, let's move no on uh why well, uh, after supper biscuit uh resolves his mic issues so yeah good idea m Ducey, you ready ready to have the floor Alrighty. uh well uh hello tiffany hello um I guess I should be cordial and thank you for your time and all the rest of it. Um, your insights are, are just phenomenal. But I wasn't going to ask a question, but I kind of have one because of something you said. Um, you said that, um, I mean, Lauren wasn't talking to you. He was talking to a character. So how hard was it to stay in that character and not let yourself kind of shine through it? I, it would depend. It would really depend on on how I was feeling that day, I guess. I mean, there was always a purpose of calling. So I kind of knew what direction, you know, things were going. And I guess, um, you know, if Lauren wanted to talk about something or something happened, then I would be reacting to that. So in that sense, in in those situations, it wasn't hard um, because I was just really a voice that was playing a character. And so I was going along with whatever the story happened to be. And so okay. in, in those cases, it was okay. So a lot of people reference the pedophile call. Yeah. That, that one, I was actually Casey in that call. It was very early on in speaking to him. And that moment uh, was the first time that I really was not going to be a part of a character it sort of just happened and um yeah so the thing that infuriates me the most about Lauren is that he denies everything and when he says stuff like I know how to say no now (laughs) (laughs) I mean yeah there it's just it's infuriating to hear him say stuff like that so I, I would did, say, I yeah. Stop. Yeah. So, so that, um, that was definitely, I would say that was, that was all me at that point, just okay. out of anger. And I wasn't sure if Lauren was going to talk to us again after that. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, staying on that for a second, like, um, geez, I don't know how to word this really. <laughs> mm-hmm. If, how hard was it? to keep your anger in check. I mean, I understand that you're a character, and so this character might not react the same way as Tiffany would to some of his disgusting shit, like like when he blamed uh, Winnie for her assault. That Mm -hmm. was disgusting. Like, hearing stuff like that would make me really angry. How did you stop that from showing through? Because I think that even if I was playing a character, my anger would just go nuts. (laughs) Yeah, I think I think it sort of helped in the sense that with the Debbie role Mm -hmm. that it was really just, she was pretty hard on Lauren anyway. Mm -hmm. So I could, I could talk shit to him in a very real way. And, you know, it would still fit the script, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, So it it definitely was hard. Um, But at the same time, nothing that he says is surprising. So I would, it's really just kind of, um, you know, just trying to keep yourself a little steady and thinking this, you know, Lauren is an asshole. So he's going to say asshole thing, you know, and then plus, plus also, you know, there's a group of people on the call at the same time. So you're chatting with other people and you're, you're not by yourself, you know, everyone's pissed off or, you know, and, and so it's kind of a group thing, I guess. Okay. Good. Uh, well, thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, let's see. Up next, we have Sting. Hello? You have the floor. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, hold on. You, you cut out a little bit. Oh, I? Oh, uh, I'll try to speak loud and clearly there in that case. Uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you, Tiffany, for uh, spending some time with us weirdos. Uh, here. Sure. And, it, and it me also, it's encouraging to see that you're still active in the community after all your interaction with, with uh, you know, Quad. So mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's, uh, that's great to see. 
Um, yeah, I had a couple of questions. Maybe I can I can um, narrow it down to one uh, in the interest of time. Um, you mentioned that one of the most infuriating things about Lorne you mentioned is his denial, which I completely agree with. It's it's terrible. It's almost it's almost worse than the what he was initially caught for. You know, his denial of what he did is almost worse mm-hmm. in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, I just kind of work with like that. Um, but are there any traits? I don't know. This might be hard for you. But are there any traits in Lorne that you find like endearing or kind of uh, positive? It's not the right word, but you know what I mean. Something that say, oh, you know, it's not so bad in that area. Is there anything like that? No. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think there's yeah. there's so many things that overshadow anything that could be good, I guess. I, I, I haven't seen. And, you know, of course, we're limited because it's just on the phone. It would never be in person. So we're not able to see anything a, a part of his real life, you know, anything outside of just being on the phone. So I would say no, though. There, there's nothing endearing. Yeah, no, I can definitely see that all, all of his negativity is really overshadowed. And so, just mm-hmm. one more question, if I may, just, just very quickly. Um, is there anything that you've found out subsequently after your conversation with him that you figured that he may have got one over on you or may have lied to you or something? Because I, I noticed uh, on a call I was listening to with Ramona that when Ramona mentioned that uh, there's evidence that he talked to other kids online, his voice was very, very, uh, almost like he got his hand caught in the cookie jar. Um, and there was more. What he said was 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 less than what we knew about, you know, Molly and Melissa and things like that. And it's almost like he thought that she knew that. But she, I don't think she did at that point. But is there anything you think subsequently that you, he may have got one over on you on? Well, it's hard to say because when you're talking about his those those types of situations, we don't know the whole story. We don't know any of it, actually. All we know is what he says. You know, the the Molly situation we knew was going to be there because it was in the chat log. So we knew that she existed. As far as Melissa was concerned, had no idea. She, she he just brought her up for whatever reason. So I don't think it's a matter of getting one over. I think it's just the fact that we don't have have the knowledge to to know everything else that happened i think that there were a lot of other girls just like them that lauren was in contact with i believe that so you know it's but there's no way to know there's no evidence of it you know there there's nothing the only reason i think that he really came out with the molly story was just that he was cornered and he sort of had to. So, um, you know, but, but aside from everything else, the, the thing that, that I can, you know, remember hearing often, even when he was talking to Ramona, was, I've never talked to another kid until that decoy. And then, obviously, we knew that wasn't true because he spoke to Molly and she was underage. So, the thing is, though... Most of the things that Lauren says, it, they're all lies. There's going to be a lie somewhere in there. He's not going to tell you the truth. I don't think that he's interested in doing that. He just basically wants you to get off his ass. That's what it is. So I tend to agree. I think that, that rabbit hole goes deeper than uh, any of us realize and any of us want to plumb, really. It's, uh, it's a scary film when you think about it. Yeah, and I, and I think... Yeah. I think that it, it was evidenced really with the Rhoda, um, the, the Rhoda conversation. I think that, you know, I, I had never obviously witnessed him talking to somebody who could be considered a victim. And Rhoda certainly was one. I mean, they didn't have anything that would be considered a, a normal, respectable relationship at first. He wanted to be, oh, you know, I'm going to be her, her stepfather or whatever. And then it turned very quickly and he won't say no, he won't. So if there is an opportunity that's presented to him, he's going to go for it. And so when he says, I can't say no, he's saying, I can't say no to myself because it's what I want to do. He won't, he won't do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty infuriating. 
Indeed. I'd have to keep myself sometimes from getting super <laughs> when I get kind of punching through the phone sometimes it's so bad. It <laughs> is, I, think I know, it's question. upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think that's my question and I, I'll yield to the next person. Thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, so let's we have uh, Intel Ride and then we have after Surper Biscuit, he's gonna try again with his audio. So Intel Ride, you have the floor. Um can you hear me? clearly yeah yes sir all right all right um thank you guys uh i have uh i'm i'm, I'm kind of uh in a weird situation my english is not good so i'll try to do my best um i have been wondering uh uh tiffany if if you could take mm -hmm the the pedophile thing out of yeah. lorn do you think that will be um which kind of person do you think he will be do you still think he will be basically insane like he is i mean he has this crazy anger outbursts you know he he starts uh, insulting and yelling and he goes crazy he's drunk um what i mean how would you rate him in his mental health from one to ten even if he's not a pedophile i think it's pretty bad um i think that you know, the pedophile thing is, is just a part of it. He's a very abusive person. Um, you know, I'm certainly not in the position to diagnose anybody. But in going over, you know, some materials that we have over different streams, you know, he's a narcissist. He cares about himself and himself only. Yeah. So I think there's a lot there that uh, is very disturbing. I think his level of selfishness goes beyond the from what i've personally seen you know in a lot of people so you know the again we go back to the fact that he he deflects everything everything even in the most ridiculous way he's going to do it he doesn't want the spotlight on him but he will want to talk all day about how you fucked up or what you've done wrong so you know, I think that they're, they're, the pedophile thing, for sure, that's what got him into trouble. And that it's a very troubling part of him, but it goes way beyond that. Um, he's an alcoholic. He is extremely abusive. He's a thief. Um, oh, he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't think twice about robbing somebody. Well, he did. He has, and he has no responsibility to pay them back. He, so you know, he's manipulative. He tries to cry. All the crying he does is fake. Yeah, and it's like a few seconds, and then he's just fine and starts insulting mm -hmm. again. It's it. Yeah. yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's a lot in you know, in order for therapy to work on anybody, that person has to want to be in therapy. They have to want to be better. And they have to want to do the work. And it's not easy. It's, it's very, very difficult to do that type of self-reflection and to be able to pick out the things about yourself that you don't like or aren't healthy and to then work to change them. So for Lauren, he has no interest in that because to him, the world needs to change. It's the world that's yeah. the problem. It's other people. So as far as he's concerned... The only reason why he's done the horrible things that he's, he's done is because of other people. Other people put him in a place and put him into a mental state that he didn't have any other choice. And that's why you get the bullshit video about the mac and cheese and the devil eggs. The meatballs. And yeah. the meatballs, of course. Amanda James. So, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, so he's not willing to change. No. Um, it's, 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 and then, 
okay, he's not willing to change. I know he, like, I've, I've heard it. He blames everyone. He's not the problem. The problem is the whole world. He shows uh, no remorse for what he has done. Um, do you believe is there something that, I don't know, whatever can happen to you in this life, is there something that could make him feel any remorse? Like, I don't know, something maybe tragic, like he can't work anymore. Uh, I don't know, like something very... Something that like really life makes changing. his life, yeah. I mean, he's already his life is already different than ours, as far as I know. I believe he cannot, he cannot, he can no longer access the internet, or mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't have a life like we all do, and he's still being that way. So what, what, what do you think it will take? for him to feel any regret <clears throat> and or any remorse? I don't think there's anything, honestly. I don't think there's anything. Even, even all the way to his mom dying. What Lauren is going to do when his mom dies is cry for himself. That's it. And, th and that's what Lauren does. He cries for himself. Perfect, perfect example, Roy. Roy is a raging alcoholic. He's a sick man. It's very, very sad, the state that Roy gets into. And Lauren, instead of going with him to AA, sits outside. Well, he did. He brought him to one meeting, and he sat his ass outside, even though he needed to be there, too. But he has no interest in helping him at all. The only interest that Lauren has with Roy is having Roy come over and fix that sh shithole that he lives in. Fixing his furnace, building something. You know, I know that he, he always talks about how Roy is such a good worker. Well, that's because he's over at your house trying to fix whatever it is that you need. That's everything for Lauren fulfills a purpose. Everybody fulfills a purpose. So when Lauren says that he's going to do something for someone, it's because they do stuff for him. As soon as they don't anymore, that's it. He's done. And that is really, really sad when you think about Roy being his brother and having a, a huge problem with alcohol. And all he cares about, about as far as Roy drinking, is that he can't work anymore. He's useless at that point. Once he starts drinking, he's just a bumbling, you know, stumbling guy who he can't do anything. And that's what, it, so, you know, I, I would think, you know, if I had a sibling who had a problem like that, I would be really sad. You know, the fact that they were drinking, I could be angry that they're still drinking after so many things have happened, but I wouldn't be angry for myself. Like, oh, now that person can't, you know, fix something that I wanted them to. I'm not going to be mad about that. That's not going to be the purpose of it. I'm going to be upset that they're killing themselves. But Lauren doesn't have that. So I don't think that there's anything that can happen to Lauren that is going to change him as far as that is, that is regarding. Yeah. I got you. It's like it, he doesn't have any empathy for others. Uh, mm -hmm. He has, he, it's basically for himself. So he doesn't yes. feel bad about others unless they provide something for him. Then he mm -hmm. feels bad because, oh, I'm not going to get what I used to get from this person. Exactly. It comes, it, it goes always back to him he needs to be mm -hmm. fine he needs to be okay he needs to feel stable i guess yeah no exactly if not he goes nuts he is nuts yeah yeah that and and uh one one last thing mm -hmm. um uh, and 
sorry to take much time, but I I always wondered. Uh, uh, I I I kind of come from a different culture, uh, so uh, I wasn't raised here in the U.S. But I found out about the show. About, I I found out about the show when I was in Puerto Rico by someone that lived here and saw it by you know by that time and then he told me about the show on youtube and he showed me and because we have some sort of similar issue there he was like this is what they should do to that people you know and mm -hmm. when i saw it i couldn't i did i didn't know english a few years ago um but i liked it because i saw people's reaction i mean mm -hmm. you can tell you can understand the body language uh, you know, it doesn't take to be a genius to understand what's going on. And mm -hmm. that's why I kept watching it. Um, how, what, what do you think? About, what do you think about he, the way he's being punished? He cannot access the internet, uh, and, and stuff like that. Some other people go to jail, uh, I, I guess I can't figure out how people like, I don't feel satisfied enough. It's mm -hmm. my point. Like I, what I known, you know, when I grew up, all I knew is that if you that do that kind of thing, you, you'll probably die, you know, and mm -hmm. it's not like I want that for anyone, but, um, <laughs> that's like the rule there so i'm very used to it and then i see all these people like they kind of walk away or they make a few months in prison like how satisfied do you feel with lauren's punishment basically well lauren got lucky lauren was facing up to 25 years if he would have gone to trial and i believe that he would have gone for that long um, he had a lot stacked up against him. So as far as him spending the five years in prison, would I have liked it to be longer? Sure, of course. In particular, the second time when he was arrested and he only went for six months, I wanted them to throw the entire book at him and to put him in there for three years. That's what I wanted. But, you know, we have to go with what is is going to be um, something that they can allow in the court system. And that's what the judge ruled. So I'll take it, you know, I'll take whatever. The thing that I find satisfying about his sentence is that he'll never get off of probation. He will never get off. Yeah. He will never get out of that class. And I think that's great. <laughs> you know, just even from, from a, a fuck you standpoint is that, uh, you know, that is something that he's so embarrassed by, and he should be. He should be embarrassed that he has to tell anybody he's going to work with that he can't work on a certain day because of this. And that's just his problem. And I love that. I think it's great that probation busts his balls like they do. And I know that um, it can seem like they don't do a lot because we see, you know, we hear him on the calls doing things over and over. Oh, why aren't they going after him? Why haven't they thrown him in jail yet? But, you know, they have to look at things from a practical standpoint as well. And, and they have to go by their own rules. And the last time that they put him in, they stacked it up. They stacked it up against him so that when they did go to court, the judge really didn't have a choice but to give him time. He deserved it. So... You know, sure, I would have loved it if he would have gotten more time. You know, he's certainly not doing any product anything productive out here. So, um, you know, that would have been great. But at the same time, his he, he has a life sentence. Even though it happens to be on the outside, he has a life sentence. His life is miserable. It sucks. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of yeah. I I sometimes when I think about it, I I I see it that way. Um he he's like like you can be in jail let's say for theft you st you steal a car you go to Yale you do your time and then when you get out 
you're kind of back to normal, you can get a job and you can be around kids. You don't have like any limited limitations, but being him, it's kind of, you're kind of in jail, even if you're in the outside world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's, yeah. So when I see it that way, that, you know, I, I can uh, understand it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, that was what I had in mind. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of people that have other questions. But I'm, I really appreciate that you answered all my questions, our questions, um, since I've been listening uh, to the calls for a long time now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for asking. All right. Uh, so we have one more person with a question, and then Stope has a quick follow-up. Uh, so Tickle okay. Shivers, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I know this, this, this question has been debated off and on. I am a... I'm a purveyor of a uh, true crime and given how given how Lauren's attitude is in general and you know we've talked before about how he blames other people for his circumstances and um, no matter how many bad choices he's made he's shown society that he can't be a trusted individual around anyone mm -hmm. um, and given that, like, I don't personally think that Lorne would be smart enough to get away with murder. But I do think maybe in another, another 10 or so years, he'll get to the point where he just doesn't really care about the law anymore. Mm -hmm. Or he just doesn't really care about his circumstances anymore, and he's just going to try to take what he wants. Um... So I wanted to know your your opinion on that. Like, do you think he's actually capable of doing something like that? Because I mean, I, I've I don't know. Like I said, I've I've <clears throat> seen this kind of situation with people like him before. Um, there was a guy who just like lived in the middle of nowhere, kind of like Lorne, and found this girl at a gas station and kidnapped her, took her, took her to his place, and then you know just just ended her. Mm -hmm. And he was also a sex offender. Um, he was actually fired from one of the, he was actually fired from one of his most recent jobs because I think his boss caught him with a bunch of pictures of the boss's underage daughter. Oh wow! So uh, I don't know. Wow. I'm stoned and I'm, my thoughts are <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so like, no, you you did good. <laughs> Um, basically, yeah, it's like, do you, like, like, at least from your person, like, there's no right or wrong answer, but just like, you know, from your personal perspective, do you think Lauren would be capable of something like that, even if it's something like over time? Um, well, first, obviously, we have to consider that anybody is capable of anything. True. That's just reality. So, you know, even... Even somebody who you wouldn't suspect as having the capability of hurting somebody, they certainly can. So, do I think that Lauren would murder somebody? I don't think so. That's just a, a gut feeling that I have. I, I don't think that he would. Um, I think that Lauren is a coward. And not to say that somebody who commits murder has balls, but I'm saying I think... I think that overall, he's a he's a cowardly person. He's not going to to inflict that type of violence where it ends somebody's life. I think he'll fight. I think domestic violence is a reality for anybody who is with him. But I I don't know that murder would be. Yeah, I, I can I can agree with that. I just I also agree with you know him being a coward and you know he. That, that that's kind of one of where one of my worries has come up is that he is so determined to not go back to jail ever again. Mm -hmm. So that oh, yeah. has has put that question in my head. Like, what would he do 
in order to not go back to prison. <clears throat> so, I mean, yeah, I think but, the thing with Lauren is that he does think that he is smarter. He thinks that he can get away with stuff. That's why he, he was drinking the whole time. And when he knew full well that he wasn't supposed to. But, you know, he can he can take those polygraph tests and sometimes he makes it. Sometimes he can he can pass it even when he's lying because he can he can think something of a technical nature, I think. You know, it's kinda like Hey, Lauren, did you have alcohol today? No. And it's 12.01. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, an hour before he did, um, but he's, he's not at that time. So he can, I think his brain is so mush that he can think of technicalities like that, and he believes that it's true. Yeah. Uh, I just, I can't help but think that he's just another small town murder case waiting to happen. But I mean, that's, that, that's just me. I, I certainly uh, hope that. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand. No, I certainly hope that. Yeah. I, I honestly hope that if that does happen, that lornography will come out of the woodwork and be like, Hey guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's the guy. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. The most bizarre dateline they'll ever have. is Lauren <laughs> calling Lauren's story. <laughs> Yeah. Right, well, thank you. Uh -huh. Of course. Thanks. Thanks for the question. I have two quick follow ups one from Stove and then one from Brother John. Okay. Stove, you have the floor. All right. I didn't think I'd get to talk twice to you, Tiffany, so that's already awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I want to say that um, the thing that, in my opinion, you deserve the biggest amount of praise for, the best, your biggest accomplishment as a lornographer, good feather in your cap there, yes. is that um, you, were able to, you were able to solicit information uh, from Lorne about the nature of the whole MySpace Molly thing and other girls that he groomed in the past. And that is incredibly important because before that point, all we had to go on was speculation and as like an addendum to that i used to be for the longest time i was in the camp of people who believed that lorne wasn't a quote-unquote pedophile but was more of just an opportunist who would take like whatever um who would take like whatever genitals thrown his way he thought he could mm -hmm. get right i didn't think that like he was explicit explicitly attracted to children Mm -hmm. But after listening to your calls with him about that, my mind has 100% changed on that. That he is indisputably a pedophile. He is attracted to children, or at the very least, women with extremely little experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree with that. Um, you know, I I think, and thank you by the way. Um, I think that Lauren and what really helped with that was was emma by telling him that we already knew it's such a classic move <laughs> he fell right into it but it was obvious that he had something to say or that he had something he didn't want to say because when he said she was a friend you know he did not want to talk about molly so it was it was fantastic that she came out with that um because lauren doesn't say things unless he's cornered He's, he's that, that's who he is. He's an animal. So when he's cornered, that's when he'll talk about it and he'll try to spin it in a way that makes him look okay. Even when he knows it's bad. Um, but th yeah, the, as far as him being a pedophile, I think that you're right. Um, he, he does have something in him that is attracted to kids. And I'm not talking about kids, kids necessarily, but teenagers. He's definitely into, he's definitely into the teenagers. And I, I think, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, just, it just goes perfectly with this. I think uh, when he said kids can fall in love, I think that perfectly just shows that he does not take kids off, or, you know, kids, even if you're talking 15 and under, he doesn't take mm -hmm. them off the table. I mean, he doesn't necessarily go after them, but I mean, he doesn't have any issue with that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think Lauren is a full out uh, 
pedophile. Like I, I think you said this in one call, uh, Tiffany is that you think the lowest he'd go is 13 because that's where a lot of guys draw the line. Um, yeah. as the teen makes it okay for them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I don't I don't think by definition, I don't really think Lauren is a pedophile. I mean, if he had a perfect opportunity where he knew he wouldn't knew he wouldn't get caught, um, you know, maybe maybe something would happen with something or someone younger. But um but yeah, the the fact that that's just so telling when he said uh kids can fall in love. I mean, that is just beyond disgusting. I mean, it it's just it's just yeah, I mean that's that's Lauren in a sentence, really. I mean um, it is. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah, it's just I had to no. Throw that's in. no, that's true. Um, you know, certainly when he says kids fall in love too, I mean, think back in your own experience and what it was like in middle school, high school, when you have your little boyfriends, girlfriends. Um, you can say things, "I love you." I mean, that's that's because you're kids and you're you're with other kids, you know. So that's that version. You're not talking to a 35 year old. So kids can fall in love, whatever their version happens to be, but they, they don't fall in love with adults. That's not that type of a relationship. Lauren so, thinks fall in love is, um, if you say the words, I love you, that means it's true. That's, that's, right. that's his full, his fullest understanding of, of love is, um, if you say it, it's true, um, and that's it. I mean, there's no, there's nothing deeper. Lauren's never experienced love outside of maybe his mom, and I don't think his mom loves him. I don't think. I think honestly, the only person that really even has any sort of love for Lauren is is maybe Roy, and um, Lauren doesn't deserve that. Roy is, uh, like you said, he's he's a, a hardcore alcoholic, but Roy is, is. I really think deep down, Roy's a good guy, and I don't think he's given us any reason to not believe that. Um, yeah. And I mean, I mean, Lauren's a piece of fucking garbage and yeah, Roy is just like this poor puppy that just wants to sit on Lauren's lap. Um, and yeah, you know, Lauren doesn't deserve that. Uh, Roy, Roy deserves, Roy deserves a good rehab place and, um, you know, happiness. Lauren deserves nothing. I agree. Sorry. I I know I know you've been here a long time. Uh, I think um, hit my head again has 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 one more follow up, and then I'll open it up, and, and, and you could you could leave at your leisure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, I'm good. I, I I know this is probably exhausting being on the receiving end of this barrage of questions, and thanks no, again it's for fine. Uh, it's fine. Through it. it's, okay. It's just, yeah, it's fun. Please just yeah don't let don't let us think we're uh, holding you holding you hostage here. Of course. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you want to throw in the towel, just let us know, and we totally understand. Absolutely. Uh, so, um, and it hit my head again. Did you want to? You have the floor for your follow up. All right. Yeah. This is um. Yeah. Just, this is kind of directed at Tiffany directly, but just at everybody more generally. Like, what is it about Lauren that is so appealing? Like, what is it about him that's so interesting? Like, what? Like, how does he captivate your interest for so long? Well, um, I think it's just because, you know, first of all, he, he gets busted doing one of the worst things possible. He gets busted red handed, um, on national television. And then to hear his excuses come after that. So you would hear some excuses from some others that say, I was going to see if she was okay. Some of them wrote alibi letters and then you have Lauren with with his list of excuses of I didn't want to go and he starts to cry. So I I think it's it's just interesting the whole the whole story that's unraveled the more you get to know and there's a lot there um that that's so different from anybody that I've certainly ever known. I've never known somebody who can deny reality as much as he does. And he continues to do that and just continues to make his life worse when he's thinking that he's making it better. What about for you? So, uh, like, at any point, though, did you think that you could, like, help him out in any real way? Or was it just, like, kind of, like, exploitative? Like, here's this stupid guy 
that I'm just going to make fun of or like was there like a point of no return basically where like you're like okay this guy's like damaged goods like I can't do anything or did you just go into it thinking like or how'd you like how'd you go into it basically and like how'd your relationship with him evolve over time well going into it it, it was just a joke I mean I you know I'm not gonna you know put something out there like oh I just wanted to keep him away from real women or anything like that it was it was interesting um and then the idea that he believed that casey was interested in talking to him and and was interested in dating him was just completely crazy um so that's how that whole thing started and then in as far as having more of the serious conversations with him you know i i wanted to see is it possible to get through is there a way that he's going to start to take things seriously because when he makes his life better, it's going to get better for everybody around him. Maybe he's not going to be as selfish anymore. Maybe he's going to take care of his mom instead of her being a parent to him when she's 80 years old. Maybe he's going to take it upon himself to pay his debts back instead of having to be forced to do that. Maybe he can understand that what he did to Betty was inexcusable he ran away like a coward with all of her money and has never apologized for it he cried to her about how sad he was and how it bothers him and he hates that he did that but he's never done anything to resolve it i think that's the biggest thing with lauren is that he doesn't want anybody to look on the past or judge him on the past but he's never resolved any of the things that he's done. That arrest that, that put him into prison for him to catch a predator is still there. It's still fresh. He's, because he's never gotten out of class. He's never been successful in probation. So in order for him to move on from that, he has to move on from the crime. And he has to move on from the class. And he hasn't. And the way that he would have been able to get away from the Betty situation is to pay her back. And he hasn't made any effort in all the time that he's been out to do that. In fact, he's, he's very defiant in doing that. He thinks that she's got enough attention because she went on the internet and talked shit about him. Well, she deserved to. She lost her husband. She lost her money. She got nothing from it except for having to hire somebody else to, to fix all the stuff that him and Tony and his brother ruined. So, you know, when it, just as an example, if he had decided that he was going to resolve the Betty situation and pay her back, I wouldn't have anything to say about that. That wouldn't have even been a part of the conversation because if somebody fucks up, which he did, I don't think he went in there intentionally and said, I'm going to take her money and I'm going to leave. I think he got in over his head and did the coward thing. So he ran away. But at the end of that, he still owes her that money. He didn't finish the job. And his responsibility in that is to pay her. So if he had made a plan and said, I'm going to give you $1,000 a month. I'm going to give you $500 a month. Now, while he's in prison, he's not going to be able to do that. But when he got out, he would have been able to. But instead, he does things like get a car for $600 a month, buy Jamie a $4,000 engagement ring, buy things at the auction. He doesn't do anything to, to pay her back, to pay his mom back all the money. He had the furnace guy running around for months without paying him a $200 bill. Because he said, oh, I have other things to pay for. It's a bunch of shit. The guy smokes three packs a day. He, he was drinking at the time. He was going over Tony's, buying whatever it needed to go over there. Um, all the alcohol, the food, whatever. So he's, he's never resolved anything. And that's why it keeps following him. Wait, so Tiffany, um, if I may. So you don't think Lauren's uh, $20 a week payments were enough? Is that what you're no, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm telling you. And certainly they weren't consistent. No, that just, I, that just happened. Yeah. 
yeah that that was just um that almost like was worse I, like it would almost be better for his case if he hadn't have done that because it was like okay betty like this is your twenty dollar payment signed to uh casey's vagina uh that's the reason for sending this um yeah and then his uh uh what was that garbage thing he said um uh yeah betty betty um was paid off of like my pain and suffering or whatever mm -hmm. it might whatever it was um yeah no that's interest lauren that's she got if if you want to put it that way that's her interest you still owe her every penny all right like if she gets to laugh about this uh good for her she should she should be able to laugh at you uh plus every dime that you owe her i mean that mm -hmm. is the scummiest i mean Seriously, that's, like, the second worst thing you can do besides, like, crimes against children is scamming old people. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, he's done every horrible thing in the book that you can do. Uh, and he's unrepentant. He's got the Holy Trinity. He's got, he's, uh, he's a pedophile or predator, whatever one you want to say. Either's probably true. Well, predator is definitely true. Pedophile is probably true. Uh, he's unrepentant. Um... Mm -hmm. And he's just a bad person. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's the thing is, uh, uh, Hit Your Head Again was asking, sorry, I'm not trying to take this over. It's just, I, 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 I kind of blow up at some points because there's so many things I have to say. But, um, yeah, that's the thing. Like, we have, we have uh, so many other predators out there. I mean, how many, how many predators has, has Chris caught throughout the years? But there's only a few that, that meet the criteria. And Lauren's really the one that hits all three is uh well that's the other one i was missing is is uh predator they all hit that um unrepentant they're really like most of them are like i shouldn't have done that like i'm sorry um but then content uh he's the only one that puts himself out there like that except you know, it's St stanley of course um but yeah i mean a lot of people lorne is is a lot more popular because stanley is just a lot to handle but um but yeah, that's that's why Lauren's so popular. Sorry yeah. again. <laughs> uh, T Tiffany, I, I came up with a question when I was thinking of uh, when you were talking. Uh, this one's a little dark, but um, we, we know Kayla, the decoy, was 13. What's the lowest you think Lauren would have went in age before he put the brakes on things? I still think it was 13. You don't That's think you're hard to a say. 10-year-old or a 12-year-old? Or... I don't think so. I, because I think that the word itself may be a little bit, a little bit much. Because when somebody is a teenager, you know, they're considered to be a young adult. They're coming into adulthood. They're starting to go through puberty, even though there were parts of Kayla that hadn't. And Lauren liked that. Um, but it was starting. And I think that that is what Lauren likes. So I think that going 12 or 11, I think that might've been a little bit much, but I don't know for sure. I would say 13. Interesting. Uh, John, you, you, you have one final question and then I'll kind of open it up and um, we could, uh, any, anybody who feels like leaving at this point can, uh, we just kind of let this die out organically. Yeah, um, my final question, just because things got a little dark towards the end there, was uh, what's the funniest thing <laughs> said to you or that you think is, like, generally, what's the funniest thing about Lauren or something that he said to you in general? Um, geez, that, that is a tough one just because there's, Lauren does say a lot of funny things. I don't know. I, I think, well, it wasn't necessarily said to me. It was said to Winnie. But when he said to take the mouse out of her mouth, it was either him or the, the mouse. I mean, why would that even be a thing? <laughs> so, so yeah, that that's definitely funny. Awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to end it on kind of a lighter note because we did yeah. go down the... Uh, the pedophilic and potential murder murderous route of Lauren's uh, mm -hmm. so thank you for that sure yeah so uh and once again thank thanks so much for joining us um 
Actually, uh, Melania, so how you say that, just join the server. Uh, sorry to put you on the spot, Melania. Uh, we're hey? just ending this, but if you have a quick question for Tiffany, you could ask it. Oh, um... I know well, we're putting you on the spot here. <laughs> um, um, oh my gosh. Um, hey, Melina. No, I, sorry. I can't think of anything. I have a question. Do you, do you really hate bananas or is that a joke? No, I really oh. do. I really hate bananas. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The <girls. laughs> they are overpowering. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i agree now melena does amazing art so you'll have to check out her channel she does amazing paintings while she listens to calls she does a lot of joran stuff as well so it's really fun yeah you'll have to link your um channel in the um in the chat melena I, I saw you just joined the server literally two minutes ago and you came in here and i threw you on the spot so quite the introduction <laughs> to the server <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you thank you yeah no uh yeah thanks for that um yeah yeah um i'll, I'll do that i actually just woke up as well so <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for joining <laughs> no worries. Uh -huh. well i might i might sign sign out here um but thank you michael thank you john um good seeing you do see gay mangoes and especially tiffany uh amazing actually talking to you i've listened to far too many hours of your voice and it's cool to <laughs> actually talk to you um but yeah right it's 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 pretty weird um in a, in a great way but uh but yeah tiffany um i at some point in the near future want to uh want to start streaming on my own so if if um you know if you're not totally out of the lorn game if you want to join me um when i start streaming uh i would love to have you um okay. i don't know if i could hit you up on here or whatever but yeah yeah so anybody who wants to shoot me a message go ahead and, and send me a message on here i will i will definitely get to it so if you have any questions or if there's something that you just want to say or you didn't want to say it here, um, I've I've received quite a quite a few emails um, from people in the community that have stories to tell, but they don't really want to say to everybody. Um, and I think that hearing Lorn and certainly his experience with all the people that have been calling him, that it kind of opened them up to wanting to heal some things from their own past. So. Yeah, if if there's anything that that you want to say um, or any questions, definitely shoot me a message on here, and I will get to it. Awesome. Don't right. be shy. You don't have to be shy. <laughs> don't be sorry. <laughs> exactly. Well, I had a great time with everyone. Um, I'm gonna have to call it a night, get some sleep, but uh, I had a great time. Thank you, everyone. Good night, precious. Yes, I I think dream about I will. It's be hard. <laughs> All right. Your archives. All right, guys. <laughs> uh, I think we're at a great spot to wrap this up. So, thank you again, Tiffany, and uh, thank you all for attending. Yes, this thank you. This very, very awesome, and it's cool to kind of get the whole community to do something like this. So. Yeah, of course, of course. Thank you so much for asking me to join you guys. I cool. appreciate it. Awesome. And yeah. Before we all logged off. Uh, no, I, I I said my piece, and yeah, yeah. yeah I, I I think you're uh in doing a series with Andrew right now. You're doing the um the yes. last book, Taken Abroad, and so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the next next chapter of that. And yeah, um, I'm not. <laughs> There's only two left. <laughs> what, but it's very what, painful. <laughs> that thing must be so hard to read. It is. It is. It's really hard to read, even just reading the words, because, you know, of course, Lauren, it's it's not written in a normal way. So, right. <laughs> I kind of stumble on myself a little bit. Yeah. Does he use words like does he use words like "been you" in the book? What does he say? D does he use words like "been you" and and like his phrases in the book? He doesn't. He doesn't. But he talks a lot about food. Yeah, which is pretty funny. Yes. <laughs> he, he, anxious a lot, though, right? like, anxious he does say anxious a lot. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Yeah, are you anxious? And of course, I mean, there's there's so much about Lorne in that book that it's really mind blowing. 
It's really mind blowing. So babies don't wear diapers. That doesn't exist. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think in this Discord <laughs> we're actually going to start doing like a, a weekly like book club where we actually yes. read chapter by chapter together in uh in Oh yeah. really? Oh that'll be fun. Yeah, <laughs> for- Welcome to join. If you oh, I would stop- love to. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Well actually yes, uh, since since there's a ton of people in here. And you're all the champions for joining and Tiffany are the champ. Uh, our, our next event, we're leaning towards a um, TCAP drinking game. We're going to stream an episode of TCAP and have rules. You know, when like Chris Hansen says something or when a predator says something, you drink this much. And oh well, we're going to have God. a weekend and we're just all going to get drunk together watching TCAP. <laughs> and I think that'd be a fun bonding event. <laughs> that is a that great idea. Fun. That would be fun. I would definitely join you for that. I haven't drank in a really long time. So... Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you can get drunk and give us your real, real opinions. You know? That's right. You know what your problem <laughs> is. Going <laughs> <laughs> down the line, yeah. Tiffany, if you don't mind, can I get your quick opinion on something? Actually, uh, yeah. So, off the top of your head, what's your favorite chat log quote? Oh, my favorite chat log quote. Um, jeez, I'll have to think about that one for a second i think it might be when he says now this is going to sound really gross and weird but when he's talking about when she's cooking at the stove and he wants to be sucking on her clit (laughs) (laughs) it's just so weird it's so weird, you know, mm-hmm. and y- just to imagine, you know, being an adult and having somebody say that to you. I, I mean, how could you ever take that seriously? It's you just wouldn't be able to. It's so stupid. No. Favorite quote from him by far that that people unfortunately don't talk about enough is when mm-hmm. he said, "How is my vagina doing without me?" Oh <laughs> yeah. My yeah his his whole. His whole possession thing when it comes to sex is just weird. Like, yeah, I want I my care. dick in my ass and oh. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, when he was doing that with Winnie, that was so funny. Yeah. It was so <laughs> funny. Yeah. He's, he is, you know, what's weird is that we can look at the chat log from 2007 and then we can listen to the phone calls from 2019, 2020. And it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Very mm-hmm. little evolution. Yeah, he, yeah. Is. he has. He he hasn't grown as a person. I don't think he's grown as anything. But he like he he's the same guy. Not at all. Yeah, I agree with you. He's he's definitely the same guy. Um, there's nothing about him that's matured, and I think that's what keeps him staying there. You know, I think even even when he doesn't believe what's being said or what's happening, um, he believes that the person on the other line cares about him, that they want to get a reaction out of him, that they want to spend time with him on the phone. Because he's even said that to Winnie, like, I know you I know you wouldn't cheat on me. I know that you say that to get a reaction. It's like, why would you? Why, oh God, why would you even bother? <laughs> It's very bizarre. I, well, it, yeah, and that's kind of why I asked that question about uh, your character earlier because I, I would I would break for sure. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're a strong you know, one. I always thought that I would, you know, even like before everything happened and when I was just listening to Ramona and stuff. I'm like, I would never be a good decoy because I just don't have that kind of patience. But I guess sometimes I do. So okay, um, well here's a question, and I'm sorry to give you another question. Uh-huh. Um, how did you, how did you get into it? If you thought you'd be a bad decoy, why did you do it? So it's going to sound kind of lame, but I was in um, a live stream. It was Wine Lovers, and Amber came in, and she was like, "Hey, does anybody sound like they're from California?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah. I mean, I could do that." <laughs> So. And that's how you. That, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And then I I called wow. her, and um, we talked for a little bit. I had no idea that it was actually going to be Lauren. 
I thought maybe she was going to have me just call somebody or make a video. I didn't had no idea. And then you know, um, that, as we're talking, huh? Oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to okay. say that it's, it's probably better if you, like that you got into it that way because you didn't have any, you know, preconceptions or anything like that. Um, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, she, we were t- just talking. Um, and then all of a sudden she goes, Oh, Lauren's calling me. And I was like, Lauren's calling you. And this was, this was right after the, the Ramona stuff where the post breakup calls were released and everything. But, I thought for sure he would never fall for it again. You know, I really, I really believe that he believed in Ramona. Yeah. It stopped the Ramona. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, then when, when she said Casey, I was like, get the fuck out of here. (laughs) And I was like, okay, I'll be Casey. And it's, it's so weird to get on the phone with Lauren and, you know, be like, hi, this is Casey. When you're yeah, not, well, I, <laughs> that, <laughs> well, <laughs> but uh, absolutely, yeah. I, I don't. I mean, from what I remember, and I mean, I understand time would have passed, but I don't know if if someone who was paying attention to it, if you could pass off as Casey, could you? No, because okay. I don't. I don't change my voice ever. This is what it is. Oh. If you want me to play a character, here it is. This is what you're going to hear because I don't. I don't do accents. I don't do, you know, I'm not a Winnie Matilda. Th- this is it. So that's why I, I know that it's confusing sometimes with the Debbie versus Casey calls because we're the same person. So, yeah, I know. I know it's confusing. So I, I'm just, I'm sorry if you've answered this before, but I'm kind of curious. Why did Ember choose you twice to play to play two different characters, you know? Like, didn't she foresee anything like, you know, he's definitely going to recognize it's you from, you know, it's Casey from a few months ago or something along those lines? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just kind of happened. That's how it happened with Ember. Like being, being on a call, things would just happen. There was not really a plan, you know, when it would <laughs> came to me and like, I would sort of know what I was going into, but that story was created by her. So it would just kind of happen as the call was happening. And then she'd be like, I'm calling Debbie and be like, pick up the phone. Hello. Um, so <laughs> we didn't really know exactly all the stuff that, you know, was going to happen at what certain point. So I don't even know where a Winnie sister came from. I have no idea. There, there were a lot of times that I wasn't on the phone, so I didn't get to hear everything. You know, just from work and life and stuff like that. So, all of a sudden, so I guess when that's why. Answer. So I guess that's why there's a lot of calls that just weren't answered. Like, uh, you know, go ahead and call Emma, and then like Emma doesn't pick up. You know. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, um, Lauren. Whenever Lauren called, nobody answered because we had to record it. So, oh, so in he order never to- he never called you. He would call, but I would never answer. Okay. But, and that's one of the things that he would get pissed off too about because everybody would answer whenever any one of us would call each other. We would always answer, but whenever Lauren did, nobody ever did. He screams that in a call too. He does. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And he knew, he knew that I, I was Casey. He knows. He, he said it. Um, and yeah, all I did was say he, no. Yeah, well, he seems to have a clear brain when he's when he's drunk. Like he, uh, like you were saying that, like at the end of the TSA call, he knew. But when you listen to it, it's almost like he catches things when he's drunk. Mm. Like that call, he does. there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that he caught. I, I thought anyways in the mm-hmm. TSA call, just that drunk. I don't think like if he was sober going into that, I don't think it would have worked whatsoever. Yeah, no, there was a lot of stuff that worked just because Lauren was drunk, for sure. Yeah. And he he was drunk a lot. (laughs) A whole lot. Yeah. I think he drank more than I thought he did. I think he was a daily drinker. Mm -hmm. If not, you know, maybe every other day or something. But it was definitely more than just the weekend when he would go 
with Tony. Do you think that he um, was drunk driving ever, like, as at his job? Because it, because on the couple calls, it does sound like he's, you know, affected. <laughs> um, I know that he, you know, it's possible that when he woke up in the morning, he wasn't exactly sober. So it's possible yeah. at that point, um, if he were to do that, he he could have, you know, blown a bad test. But I don't think that he went driving while he was drinking. You know, uh, so I don't think he, yeah. Oh, sorry. It's, it's totally irrelevant, but I have it on my mind. You brought up Tony. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in one of the calls he mentioned that he, he would go over Tony's house but when he was there, they didn't allow him to use the bathroom. Do you have any insight on why that is? I don't know. I, I know he has said that it's because they have a septic. And I believe that, you know, a septic, I know if you don't treat it properly or, or maintain it properly, um, it can be kind of touchy as if it's going to back up or something like that. Um and so I think that that could have been the reason why. I think also they just didn't like him. I think that's because yeah. I can't imagine that her, meaning Wendy, having her family over and saying, you can't use the bathroom. Because she had a daughter and she had a brother I know that, that she was close to. So I just can't imagine that. <laughs> but for Lauren, I can, I can see them saying you can't. <laughs> Make them go outside. <laughs> It's just so bizarre to have company and like, yeah, you know, you're like, welcome here. I'm just not allowed right. to use the bathroom. It's just a very <laughs> bizarre yeah. dynamic. Yeah, exactly. Now, now it is. Did you ever talk to any of Lauren's friends like Tony? No, I didn't. Did, I only talked to her Did he ever boy. try to get you to? No, he didn't. Did, that's surprising. He didn't. Boy, he had boy. me on the other line. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I just said he's probably jealous of other, other you know, the other people, other guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I think, too, he he was kind of afraid to have Tony on the phone because he didn't know what Tony was going to say. Mm. So he could have either. He called me a young cunt. Jeez. Isn't that lovely? Oh. Yeah. I love the, the so. young, the young uh, <laughs> Right. Like I know. Thing. Yeah. I know exactly. Yeah, they're they're definitely two of a kind. Do you kind of going irrelevant, but it's uh, coming to mind. Go ahead. Oh. Hello. Uh, okay. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, okay. No, you're cool. um. So based off of what you were saying about Tony, do you think that Tony met the um, what is it, Molly? Molly or, up in MySpace world. Yeah. Do you do you really think he met her? I don't. Or any of the other girls. Okay. I don't think that he did. I know there's a lot of theories out there, and you know they're they're all plausible. Um, people say that Lauren was stalking, that she didn't know that he was going there. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, I think that she did know. I think that it's possible that she did mess up on the day. Um. I also think that she perhaps, you know, wasn't really that interested in seeing him either, mm. you know, and maybe, maybe wasn't interested in having another meeting place because that's why I kept harping on that. It just didn't make sense to me mm -hmm. that he's going to drive all that way when he doesn't have money and spend the night at a hotel, pay for the gas. The guy didn't have minutes on his phone. Again, this guy cannot keep minutes on his cell phone to save his life. <laughs> so Molly didn't have, he didn't have minutes for Molly. He didn't have minutes for Kayla. Um, I think that uh, I, can, I can see his plan. I can definitely see his plan that we're going to just go there. We're going to not talk, but we're going to see each other. I can, I can see that happening. Um, so, you know, I get it. I get the stalking as well. Um, Operation Lull was, was thinking that too. I get it. Um, I just think that 
they both probably agree to this. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's money it, <laughs> the money situation. <laughs> so I was going to say the money situation is so weird. And so uh, one thing I'd like to use my Andrew Burkett time, tra- time travel tokens to find out exactly what happened. There. It's uh, super creepy, super weird. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know his his finances, man, there's they're so messy and just and, and this is a guy who who's already been through bankruptcy. <laughs> so after bankruptcy, he's God. still he's still I mean that that type of a of an event, you know, in your financial history is a pretty major one. Mm-hmm. And so if it's gonna happen, you had better make it count. You had better make sure that, you know, okay, now I'm going to do good. I'm going to make sure I don't fall into the traps again. Because a lot of times when it happens, people start accumulating things when they're like in their 20s, you know, and maybe are a little bit irresponsible and it just carries over and gets bigger and bigger and too much to manage. But for Lorne, you know, he was being completely irresponsible when he filed for bankruptcy. He had all of those loans. He had the credit union that worked with him pretty good. That didn't really work with him pretty good because they repoed his ass. <laughs> um, and so, and he was just really, really bad with money. Um, and then after the fact, after all that happens, he then starts to get credit cards again. And what does he do? He believes that running up the balance is how you build your credit. So that's what he did. Genius. <laughs> Genius, Yeah. Do you think he actually did that, seven. or do you think that was just like an excuse in his head to, like, you know, justify his bad behavior? What do you mean? Sorry. I said, do you think he actually believed that, or like? I think he did. Yeah, because I don't think he knows. You know, that's not the type of type of stuff that's taught necessarily. So I don't think, I don't think that he knows. I just, I, I'm in. Yeah, can I have to cut you off there? Lauren had a good enough credit to get a credit card at the $300 spending <laughs> limit, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> he had enough, uh, or he didn't have enough on that credit card to get him enough gas to go there and back and back again, though, unfortunately. He, so. he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. So that that is interesting. I wonder what happened to his uh, that credit card. He he loaded that thing up buying beer. I bet mm-hmm. you. Beer, bracelets, yeah, cigarettes, pizza, lamps. You know. <laughs> he weren't going to bring you any pizza. <laughs> That's <laughs> what he did. Uh, it was one of those credit cards that you have to send them money, and they like put it on a card, like one of mm-hmm. those credit cards. That's what she said. Oh, like a secured <laughs> card. Yeah, yeah, like a pre. A credit card See, or something like that. But he didn't have money to begin with, so he wouldn't have been able to no. putting that money down on a card like that. He may have had a little yeah. bit of stuff away still in all that money. I don't know. Oh, he was eating something. Bologna sandwiches. And, you know. Right. Yeah. Didn't even have a bed. I think no, he didn't. Life, that's a lifestyle choice on his part. I don't think that. I don't. I, I think money. <laughs> he might have not. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he thought, you know, I never meant to go there. I wasn't going to go there, but like he talked me in the chat about all this thing, all the money he doesn't have to buy a light or to get have gas to go there and back and there and back again. But he just had to drive to see the thirteen year old girl. But he didn't mean to go there, though. Even though you were no. beyond, you're imagining. Come on, that's also, right. You don't know what was in his head. This guy without a bed, supposedly, according to him, had a one night stand two days before the sting. So, like, he just met mm-hmm. some drunk girl at a bar and banged him, banged her on his wooden floor of his apartment <laughs> two days before. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he said he said that I think the bed broke because <laughs> of him banging away, but nice. that couldn't have. Put- that couldn't have happened. It couldn't have happened like that. Just the timeline doesn't make sense. And the ease of with, with how, how he lies so easily about and about things he doesn't need to lie about is kind of yeah. scary when you think about it. How quickly oh, you can it lie is. I yeah. know. Oh yeah. I know. It's, he's a stupid, stupid man. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> 
specialized. I think was was it what was the date he was going to go on? And Ramona was going out with a the therapist. And was it Jenny from Walmart? <laughs> and he said Jenny from Walmart. That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> that's that, that, that was, yeah. That's one of my favorite calls. I think because they got him so good with with him having to come up with the lie that Tony is the only one with her phone number, and like he he could not get out of that. It was great. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, there's my favorite kind of calls where, where people, he just gets backed into a corner and yeah. he just can't get out of it. Like, um, I think Walk of Front of is another one of my favorites. He's just like, he's nothing oh, yeah. to say. And it's just, yeah, just backed into a corner. Fantastic. Yeah, but with, yeah. with that call, sorry, sorry to cut anybody off there, but with that call, it's a male. And Lauren is totally different with males than he is with females. Yeah. 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 So, that's a great call. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, it's different a little bit. Yeah, it's it's always interesting to hear Lauren interacting with guys because it is a totally different, you know, in one second he's wanting them to come up there to get into a boxing ring. And then, you know, I, I think Reborn uh, mentioned this on his stream that, you know, then two seconds later or, you know, half hour or whatever he's asking him to be the best man in his wedding <laughs> <laughs> so crazy what? meanwhile he gets insecure if any of his catfish live within like a 10 mile radius of a penis of course of course absolutely oh man yeah did you ever find lauren charming at any point um, did I ever find him charming? No, I don't think so. I think th I think there's way too much there on the other side of that that I just won't wouldn't find anything charming. You know, I th I thought it was it was funny sometimes when he would write his poems because he wrote he wrote a lot of poems and he always wrote them down on paper and then he would take a picture of it. Now, as long as his wiener wasn't in the picture, that was. <laughs> That was a lot better, but yeah, his, his poems, you know, they're, they're very immature. Like I'm not a poet. I certainly couldn't write anything like that. Um, but they're all very just rhymy, very basic. Um, but he, he loved to write those poems. So, you know, <laughs> do you see like at face value, if you didn't know who Lauren was, do you see how he could be charming at like first glance? Like if you didn't like, you know know his history or um know the person like charming him. how like in person yeah like i've heard i've heard it like from people that like a, a first impression he could be potentially like you know like a little charming or a little like uh you know interesting um i think he's he's just kind of a friendly person you know just on surface level he's he's friendly just kind of, he'll, like he'll like, yuck it up with you you know and but he doesn't really have anything to talk about. Yeah, so, so you know, he's yeah. yeah. It's it's bizarre I mean, when you think about it. Yeah, like like the whole Boston cap thing, right? He's walking around wearing a Boston cap and you know, I'm sure that happens. Like you don't have to be a fan or whatever, but like, if you were to be like, oh, you know, did you watch the game today? He'd be like, oh, no, I don't even watch baseball. He'd be like, what the fuck are you wearing that for? You know? I mean, he could wear anything. They have hats for, for anything. Well, the only reason and he so chooses to wear that. Sorry, go ahead. I have that conversation, like, daily with my Boston cap. Like, uh, are you into the World Series? Are you into Boston? It's like, no, I'm in a pedophile cult. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I t uh, see honestly though like when I get asked about my Boston cap because I'm not a baseball fan either I just have to default to like mm -hmm. no I don't even watch baseball so, yeah. <laughs> see you do it you bring yeah, Lauren to that. people who don't know you're talking about Lauren yeah, I can't, I see, can't it's explain so this to strangers it's just impossible it just doesn't definitely not right. definitely it's not it makes me because I'm actually from Boston so the first time I saw T cap the whole Boston uh, cap he was wearing didn't even phase me whatsoever because I see it so regularly. Yeah. Feel like a few minutes in, that I was like, "Wait a minute, they're in Kentucky." You know that, like, it, it like, yeah. like, like, why the fuck is he wearing a Boston cap? But now, yeah. like, 
crazy because even as a Bostonian and as a Red Sox fan, like I associate that hat with Lauren Armstrong as much as I do with the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's a holy artifact, yes. you know. A, <laughs> it is. It is. And I'm actually I'm actually a Boston fan and I'm a Patriots fan. So it would just kill me to see their hats on the top of that lumpy head. I hated it so much. <laughs> and I think when he went Huh? Also, I was going to say, um, even something as small as the Boston cap, not to forget, if you got caught in a situation and your hat was so famous, you wouldn't even want to hear the word Boston again. But right. I think during the new Reborn saga, he bought a new one. And, and he did. Like, he what? did. Yeah. <laughs> well, let alone the whole Boston thing. He ruined his birthday for the rest of his life. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love Beautiful. that. <laughs> and uh, Nick Hongwell, no one has asked my ethnicity. This is Matt Joran. So. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no genie talk either. <laughs> what is your ethnicity? No, I'm playing with you. You don't have to. You don't have to answer. <laughs> right, it's generic. How about that? I'm a generic white female. <laughs> you feel good. What? No way. What? No way. Now that guy is funny. I wish we knew more. I mean, I do too. He's kind of a I do too. Guy. I love his his acting. I love his glass eye. I want I want to know the story behind yeah. the glass eye and why he has it. Is it a glass eye he's, or is he's, it he's he's just a lazy eye? It's a glass eye, at least from. <laughs> is that right okay? Yeah. Okay. Some people speculate he's a Vietnam veteran. I don't know if his age aligns Ooh. with that or not, but Ooh. okay. Yeah. Well, he's he's, 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 he's uh, man. Uh, bro brother John Joey actually disproved that himself because um, Michael Willis's birthday uh, doesn't line up with that at all because he would have been 17 by the time that the U.S. completely pulled out of Vietnam. Oh. Okay. Oh. okay. So that, that doesn't hmm. align. See, I've heard a bunch of mm. theories about his eye, but. Yeah, maybe it is a lazy eye, but I heard it. He lost his eye. Go ahead. He lost it in Mortal Kombat, man. He's keen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? No way. That's, that's my uh, favorite. I, I, feel like I, I feel like I pull that one out, too, sometimes. The what? No way. Just for no reason. Of course, online. <laughs> right. Just the fact that the guy with the most notoriously awful acting actually got away with it. Like, Scott. I Brady. know. Yeah, oh, like, 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 I can't be happy about that, but there's there is a dramatic irony. Yeah, and his exit was epic too. <laughs> oh, <falling laughs> it was yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, stumbling off this. <laughs> yeah, that 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 that's I would have loved the view. We've been watching visited that house. Oh, you, right, you did. You have a photo there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been watching um, some, um, I don't know what you'd call it, YouTube uh, TCAP adjacent type videos. And yeah. sometimes watching them, it really feels like a bit like a joke. But then mm -hmm. when you go back and watch TCAP stuff, it feels the same way. It's just because I'm yeah. so used to it. I, I know it's not a joke, but I couldn't imagine watching it. Uh, as it was airing and thinking it was real like it's so outlandish it's so ridiculous some of the guys are really just like wow he really did that <laughs> good, good news i know you off, but actually that sparked another question for me for you tiffany are, are you into mm -hmm. any of the vigilante predator busting groups at all like do you watch any of their content or do you have a favorite channel no no i haven't i haven't gotten into anything like that um i think oh my gosh I've seen um, I've seen some things, you know, mostly from the UK, I think, and I think they're just, they're so wild because they just will start screaming and run, running at this person, and you're like, what the fuck? Um, so I don't know. I I think I think sometimes they're a little obnoxious, uh, to be honest with you, but yeah. you know, I I don't really know um, a lot about them or anything like that. 
I'd so no, I don't really follow anything. I'd have to basura. Agree. Yeah, basura. I'd have to agree with you on that. Basura. They are obnoxious, but I kind of look at it like a train wreck where you, when you're watching mm-hmm. it unfold, you, you just you yes. can't like, take your eyes off of it because it's just yeah. so absurd and so ridiculous. But like you just can't not watch it when when it is presented in front of you. You know, it's like oh my god, I need to see yeah. what's happening here. Most of the predator yeah. groups I see out. Most of the vigilante groups I see out there, they are incredibly irresponsible. Like um, like yeah. Perverted Justice gets a lot of shit, and we know that they're they're not a perfect organization by any stretch. They've done some you know shady, questionable things. But the TCAP, uh, not the TCAP, the uh, vigilante groups on YouTube. They make perverted justice look like saints by comparison. Some of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, some of them tend to do more harm than good, in my opinion. Because uh, if they did things right, they could have taken these guys off the street, but they just right. screw everything up with the confrontation and what they're doing. It's like you could have taken yeah. them off the street and made it a bit safer, but they don't. Uh, right. Yeah. And th- did I see? Because um, sometimes I'll I'll come in and and see what you guys are t- talking about, and I saw. Um, somebody posted um, something about a guy going to an employer's office and trying to confront yeah. the employer. Is that what they did? Yeah, that was yeah, Rami. He does shit like that all the time. Yeah, we watched yeah. 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 So what ended up happening with that? Did they talk to anybody or like did they get thrown out of there? It was at a TSA airport or something like that, <laughs> so they couldn't get to the man. They couldn't get to the ramp agent manager, and then around that time, I fell asleep with the TV on, Punch so I didn't get to see what happened. Okay. <laughs> Punch him! Punch him! He's okay. done that in the past, where he went and confronted their employer, and he was secretly like filming it. And then the dude's like, "Wait, are you filming me?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm about you get your restaurant rave reviews." And he's like, "Dude, I don't want to be associated with this." And it's kind of fucked up that you're like secretly filming me, yeah. and then everybody in his chat's like, "Oh, you're a pedo sympathizer," and it's just ridiculous. Like these communities yeah, yeah. are toxic, and like I can't believe YouTube still allows this show. Yeah. Now I've I've seen yeah. what um was going on with Mr. Peanut Butter. And he got involved with um, one of those predator poacher groups. And, mm-hmm. you know, I had seen somebody had posted a video about him, about exposing him or whatever. And, yeah, in the comments, I mean, they, they're pretty wild. Um, Mr. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> right. Yeah, get those wrenches, everybody. <laughs> I didn't know about this. I'm going to research. Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, it was, I guess, one of the, because he got involved in one of those. And I've got to say, you know, the TCAP community is very tame compared to these other guys. So, yeah. you know, just even, even like us, like the group of us, it's, it's very tame. Um, yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. Crazy. I, ha- I hadn't really gotten involved with any of that. I just saw it from just like, you know, just a glance. But, you know, I don't know. I don't remember which brother, but one of them, while we were talking not too long ago, said that they suspect people that do those types of vigilante justice probably, not probably, but might be predators themselves. And it's kind of a way to um, absolve themselves of their guilt, but also to kind of hide it and obscure it. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it certainly could be. It would, you know, be, it would be. A... Yeah, I'm just uh, all the guys we, like, like Joran, um, yeah, Mr. Mm-hmm. Peanut Butter, those accusations. Uh, what well, I think one of the moderators on the Hanson vs. Predator subreddit as well mm-hmm. came out and something that happened. So maybe something yeah. to that. Yeah, it could be. Definitely could be. I don't know. It's all crazy. That was true, by the way. I was the one who made that expose post. Oh, wow. About Mr. Peanut Butter? No, about um, the mod from uh, Hanson vs. Predator. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, it wouldn't be the first time that that's somebody who's involved in, in a community like this or, you know, in law enforcement or whatever is actually the one doing... The, the problem. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Sorry. Luckily, that doesn't survive long in this community, though. Pretty good at weeding them out. Yeah, I mean, hopefully. It's happened a couple of times. I mean, I think that everyone has to take their online security within their own hands. You know, if somebody's being inappropriate, then you tell them to fuck off. If, if you can't do it yourself, tell me and I'll tell them to fuck off. Like, mm-hmm. that's, you know, that's what we do. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, um, you know, nobody should be making you feel uncomfortable. They, you know, um, nudes are all docs. You fuck you, dude. Like, you, try that. Try that, you know, and you'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, there is the house. <laughs> That's that's crazy. Oh, these poor people. They must think we're so crazy. I mean, obviously hmm. you're not like at their door, but you know. I just moved to Florida, so I did this house and I did the uh, Flagler Beach one too. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> they actually got in the Flagler Beach one. They were moving, and I like begged the contractors to let me in. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, it's so funny. <laughs> what year was that? This is very recently. This is like oh, a couple okay. months ago. Okay, so it wouldn't have had the same decor then. <laughs> no, let me, get, let me pull up a picture of the Flagler Beach one. You could all keep talking. I have to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. You okay. Yeah. You know the property yeah. value of that house? Yeah. Oh, okay. What? Tiffany, have you been listening to any calls recently? Or like which calls? You mean the reborn ones? Any. Yeah, reborn too, definitely. Oh, yeah. I, I try to catch um usually I don't ever catch things live. I try to if I can, yeah. but um but the reborn ones I usually because he doesn't do it on his schedule really. Mm-hmm. And so I always end up if I see that it's live, it's usually just ended or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, the, um, the Jamie robot calls are fantastic. Uh, they're, they're so funny. I was listening to it at work today. Yeah. Yeah. They're, fu- they're so funny. Um, you just can't believe that this guy is actually talking to a robot. Right. And the robot is so <laughs> sassy. I love it. Yes, definitely. So great. I know. I know. He's the- that that those, is James. Huh? Sorry, that's, sorry. I was just going to no, say those, those calls give me faith that you'll never find anyone in real life because if you're so desperate <laughs> and so lonely, you'll probably have to talk to a robot. I think I think you've pretty much given up right there. That's 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 into the rope, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but he would tr- he would if he could. I, he just can't, um, just because he. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have that personality. I think he's too damaged in that way. You know, it's never happened, so it's never going to happen at this point. Yeah, and even if it, even when it is real people, like uh, the whole Nikki situation, I remember reading the court, the, the document mm-hmm. from probation, and it's, yeah. it's craziness. Like she didn't even know that they were in a relationship, and he's given her thousands of dollars and uh, tried to yeah. her, like. She, I mean, same thing he did to you as Debbie. It's it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I know. I know he's he's very possessive and he's a stalker. Right, he's definitely a stalker. I mean, I mean, I mean, all you need to do is give him a smile, or you know, uh, you know, lend him your lighter so he can smoke up a cigarette, and all of a sudden you're in a relationship. Uh, you're you're due to get married and everything. It's it's it's, yeah. it's one of the things I can't quite put my finger on where that comes from. It's it's so it's so possessive and he's so quick with it. It's yeah, it's yeah, yeah. No, he um. I think he's he's just so desperate that he looks for any sign, like a positive sign from a female. Um, so, and then he'll cling on to that because remember when he was talking to Ramona and he was sending her a thousand shower videos and he said, I remember what you said too. That could work. <laughs> and I was like, that could work. That's the one thing that anyone has ever said to you that's positive. This woman that you're crying over and that you would say that you want to marry, she says that could work. And you're like, she loves me. There you go. <laughs> um, but that's what that's what he does. He takes any little any little, you know, indication that 
that you care and and you're in love. It's even better when he gets thrown for a loop, like when you when uh, your character sent him the the postcard. Um, wish you were here, glad you're not. And he was so right. Confused. He was <laughs> right, but he loved it. And you know that card was sitting in a litter box. Like I didn't, I didn't send it. Somebody sent it from Florida, but it was it was sitting in cat piss. <laughs> I love everything that said to Lauren gets, gets. I think Lamondre was setting like something like uh, tuna set in a hot car or something before they sent it to him. Oh, Lamondre, yeah, Lamondre was there was um, Greek yogurt, Parmesan cheese, um, tuna juice. It was put in the trash, so it had like egg shells and stuff on it. Oh. And then it was put into a, like a bag, like a plastic bag sealed. And then it was left in like a hot car for a couple of days. And then it was mailed to him and he put it right in his mouth. So <laughs> <laughs> no. no. what? Dude. That's fucking nasty. Yeah. <sighs> Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. That's right. Eighty-seven. So, Tiffany, do you have um, any kind of insight on the whole dragon word thing? <laughs> the, what? the what? The dragon word thing, like uh, when he would stutter. Oh, when he do- oh when he does his mini syllables and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, like, what, like why he does it? Well, just like, um, yeah, I guess. I mean, what's your what's your take on it? Do you think it's uh, brought on by alcohol, kind of thing, or what? What would you know? <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's just because I don't think he necessarily has like a speech impediment. I think he just is making noise while he's thinking. Yeah, I mean, years of drinking will do that to you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I think that's I think that's kind of what it is. So he sta- you know, he stammers a little bit, but it's more like the noises he makes in between words. Yeah, I've got a little bit of insight on this because I actually um, have a kind of small speech impediment, I guess. But um, what, what what I think it is, it's something along the lines of he, his his uh, brain is almost working too slowly. Um, you get like different types where like your your mouth works too quickly for your brain and the other way around. I think his brain is working too slowly. So I think Tiffany, you're right when he's trying to fill in the gaps between he want, he's trying to say something but hasn't thought of what to say yet, and he just his mouth just can't just can't slow down enough to stop. You know, that is true. Yeah, yeah. I kind of I think I don't know if I told him that. Sorry, I told other people, but it's almost like um, a sewing machine. If you've ever pressed the pedal of a sewing machine, it kind of gets going. Like before it does, it kind of makes this humming sound. That's Lauren's head. (laughs) That's perfect analogy. That's perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Hey, Tiffany, I, 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 you've been going strong for two and a half hours. Um, <laughs> I, I hope you don't feel compelled this day. I, I myself am going to take leave. Uh, I got to on the East Coast. We're pushing up towards midnight. Uh, so I, I, thanks again so much for coming, and I hope you stay in contact and interact with the community because I, I think you, um, a lot of people got to cross talking to you off their bucket list tonight. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm happy to, you know, and like, like I said earlier, like, just shoot me a message if, you know, I try, I'll try to pop into the, to the server um, when I can. Sometimes I'm just short on time and can't, you know, scroll through all the prolific chatting that's going on. But, um, there's a lot. All <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys will be the only ones who can say I'm online. Okay. So. Do me a favor, Tiffany. <laughs> yeah. Appear offline. Oh, Jesus. Everyone else but okay. me. Okay. This is right. I, I thought you were going to tell Tiffany to do her. Ex- <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Uh, the experimenting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scientist Warren doing his experimenting. 
Oh, jeez. Not to mention, how is it like he's like, I'm going to do your experimenting for you. It's like, then right. how is she doing it then? <laughs> <laughs> right, I know. It it's like, what? <laughs> okay, guys. So. Good night, everybody. All right. Night, night everyone. Okay, Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank Talk you. to you later. Night. Bye.